Live from the 607, it's the Ocho Duro Parlay Hour, where we're talking everything going on in the world of sports. Join in the conversation on social media with the hashtag ODPH, because here we go. Welcome to an all-new edition of the ODPH Podcast. I am Padawan J, uh, leading the episode this week because my compatriot in arms, slightly under the weather this week. Yes. What's going on, everybody? Ken M. See, I got that whole Scotty for all uh, shake, shake, shake it up voice going on right now because it is in the Northeast where we record and the head cold game is very, very strong right now. I'll say I know on 607 TWS, uh, Rich said you sound like you smoke packs a day. And while I have to agree with him, it also sounds like you're trying to make a run for a Sam Elliott impression. Yeah, it's it's kind of going down that way. Yeah. But I'm going to try doing this as much as I can. I apologize to everybody in advance. I might be doing some coughing. I might be doing some sneezing. But fear not... We are still here to give you all the sports and pro wrestling topics that only we can do here at the ODPH, and we definitely want to keep that conversation going. Swing on over to odphpodcast.com for blogs, links, you name it. If it's the ODPH, you can find it all right there. But, Pad, they want to hear some sports talk. Yeah, so, of course, sports, no story or no league bigger right now than that in the NFL because we are in the midst of the NFL playoff season. The Super Bowl is now a mere what two weeks away less than two mm-hmm. less than two weeks away now nfl championship weekend was this past weekend of course we got to talk about that and we're going to start in the order of the games the way they took place because uh, we're being fair uh and the first game that took place was the nfc championship game in philadelphia between the philadelphia eagles who defeated the san francisco 49ers by the final score of 31 to 7 uh jalen hurts 15 of 25 for 121 yards passing no touchdowns or interceptions Josh Johnson, uh, 7 of 13 for 74 yards, no touchdowns or interceptions. Brock Purdy, 4 of 4 for 23 yards passing, no touchdowns or interceptions. And also Christian McCaffrey, uh, 0 of 1 for 0 yards passing, (laughs) no touchdowns or interceptions. Uh, Christian McCaffrey led San Francisco in rushing with 15 carries, 84 yards, 1 touchdown. Kenneth Gainwell led Philadelphia in rushing with 14 carries, 48 yards, no touchdowns. Uh, Devontae Smith led as Philly in receiving with two catches, 36 yards, no touchdowns. And then Debo Samuel led San Francisco in receiving with three catches, 33 yards, zero touchdowns. And I think I feel safe in saying what everyone was thinking. Damn. Also, I don't think anybody saw this game going this well, no. or going this way. But when you have Brock Purdy, you know, only make two, uh, four attempts, four completions, went out, I think, on the first series. Uh, you knew things were kind of, uh, and I even got the notification uh, on my Apple Watch because I was not able to watch the game as it started. Uh, I went, well, this game is over, you know, because I, I couldn't even tell you who the now fourth string Uh, quarterback is for the San Francisco 49ers we ended up finding out who it is it it was Josh Johnson you know and then later in the game uh, Josh Johnson got hurt he got he went out with with concussion protocol so at that point I'm like well shit who's the emergency quarterback because they got there's no way they're carrying three quarterbacks in this game so so who's the emergency at this point but uh, then I got the notification that Brock Purdy was coming back in the game goddamn you know impressive as all hell because as we found out Either last night or this, or uh, last night. Last night, as we record, uh, he suffered a UCL tear and is now out for at least six months. Yeah. So making their off season uh, all that more interesting because you got to figure out what you're going to do with Trey Lance. Jimmy G is a free agent, you know, but nonetheless, Philly is won the game onto the Super Bowl uh, for the second time in five, five, six years, something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, so certainly an impressive win for the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, this was a little wild. I don't think anybody saw this game go in this way. The minute Brock Purdy went out, it was game over. Oh, yeah. There was no chance, and we didn't know what it was at the time, the injury. No. Because the only thing is, he went out, he was getting treatment on the side. Mm Mm-hmm. And when you're not going right directly to the locker room, it gets a little confusing like that. You're going, okay, are you coming back in? Because this is the biggest game of your season. Right. With the exception of if you you get to the Super Bowl. So if you have a pulse, you got to be on that field. Yep. He didn't. They put in Josh Johnson, who is an adequate backup. I'll say, a yeah, dude's been around longer than I remembered. Yeah, no, he's definitely been a journeyman throughout the league. So he could handle going in for spot duty. Was he going to take over this game? Absolutely not. San Francisco caught lightning in a bottle with Purdy. 
because for being Mr. Irrelevant to a MVP conversation candidate, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. this was a huge blow, especially to happen so early. This wore out their defense because they were on the field. They could not make a stop on Philly. Yeah. Which Jalen Hurts took full advantage of this. And I and I gotta say, he's gotta be in that MVP conversation. Oh, absolutely. If he's not the clear cut front runner. I think he is now. I th- I think with Lamar missing most of the Lamar had a fire start to the oh, yeah. first half of the season. But then he had the injury and he missed basically a half of a season, whatever it ended up being. But no, I th- I think Jalen is clearly, you know, the front runner to win NFL MVP, which if you know stats and you know history with the NFL He's in the Super Bowl. He wins that NFL MVP. Statistically, not a good likelihood for Philly to win the Super Bowl because right. because historically, if the person who has won the NFL MVP that season is in the Super Bowl, that that team has never won the Super Bowl. Right. At all. Like Matt Ryan won it, you know, a couple years ago when it was the Patriots against the, the Falcons in the Super Bowl. Atlanta lost. Brady won it. I think it was the year one one of the years they went to the Super Bowl. The Giants. The Giants. And then they lost. Yep. You know, but then on the flip side with San Francisco, who the hell mm. built a voodoo doll against you guys? Like is your is your practice facility built on a burial ground? Like, what the fuck? I've never seen this. Even in Madden, yeah. where you get freak injuries or, or sports video games where you get a freak injury. Like, I remember there was one 2K video game. You know, there's a, there's a screenshot of somebody playing in a 2K, one of the 2K basketball video games where it's like, oh, uh, Jimmy Butler will not be in the game tonight. And then in parentheses, the listed reason was like attempted murder yeah. in the game. Like, the, the video games get wild with the injuries. You know, but you, you start with Trey Lance, and Trey Lance is looking great. Goes down week two, week three. Okay, right. Well, hey, we got Jimmy G. Jimmy G's not bad. Jimmy G goes down. So, oh, hey, you know, we got Mr. Irrelevant, Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy comes in looking fire. Injury to his UCL. Oh, hey, you know what? Don't worry, we got Josh Johnson. Well, n- never mind. He's got a he's got a concussion. He mm-hmm. he's out for the game. I mean, it got so b- bad that it was got to the point where there was a 49ers uh, fan on Twitter with the, the Twitter handle at 49ers Paradise who tweeted paging Steve Young and he tagged Steve Young. Are you at the game? I'll buy you a jersey. Yeah. To which Steve Young quoted it and said, warming up in the parking lot, let me know. Yeah, no, I mean, it honestly was a weird situation to see how this all unfold because San Francisco had been so lucky mm-hmm. in the face of failure. With, and, and adversity. Yeah, I mean, that's the whole thing. This Their entire quarterback carousel was one that, sitting here on the outside looking in, mm-hmm. it's astonishing they got this far. And then let alone Purdy was in there. It's a whole different dynamic. Yeah. Josh Johnson was not going to win in a shootout against Hurts. Oh, hell it no. It was never going to happen. No. The best thing they could have done was really run a lot of screens with McCaffrey and Debo, and they would have had a chance. Mm-hmm. But we have to give credit to Philly because what they did is they established a tempo early. The biggest uh, game shifter, though, I think, was the Devontae Smith uh, catch yeah. that didn't get replayed. Yeah. And a little confusion of why, I think, in that situation. NFL refs very suspect this weekend. That's the big narrative from this weekend. Huge. And especially for the home teams. Mm-hmm. More so the other game than this one. But we'll get into that when we talk about Kansas City and yeah. uh, Cincinnati. But for Philly... They did what they needed to do. They were the number one seed going in this entire year. Yep. I mean, they came out so hot out the gate. They never faltered. And now just was so dominant on both sides of the ball. Like, that's Mm -hmm. the big takeaway. And like I say, the fact that San Francisco did not make a bigger fuss about the Devontae Smith catch, I thought was a problem. Because in these kinds of games, it's all right to overthink a bit. Yeah, because at this point, if you don't overthink it or or at least look at it and kind of go deep in your head about it, you got nothing to lose. Yeah. You, you lose this game, you're done. Yeah. And if you and if you challenge it and it goes your way and you end up winning the game, you look like a genius. Yeah. But that's the thing. It's a timeout early. You burn it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's not like two minutes left in the game. Right. So the fact that they, that they were so nonchalant about it, it was just weird yeah. watching. Well, that's Kyle Shanahan for you. Well, yeah, exactly. Like Kyle Shanahan, the hand in, Kyle Shanahan in the regular season. Not bad. Right. Kyle Shanahan in the playoffs? Hey. Yeah. And 
it was yeah, like I say, that's just the narrative you can take away from this game. Philly yeah. was a better team, and they proved it. Yeah, the 49ers had they had a healthy Brock Purdy would have been a lot different game. I think it would have been a lot closer. I think I still think as good as that defense is, that's a lot to contain on the <laughs> Philadelphia side for the offense. I mean, yeah. between Miles Sanders, who we didn't even mention, eleven carries, forty two yards, two touchdowns. I mean, you had a touchdown run from Jalen Hurts, a touchdown run from Boston Scott. You know, so while the receiving game wasn't much, they were just running the ball down their throats. Yeah. Well, at that point, there is there is no point. No. You know, they were like, okay, we're up big enough. We can put this on cruise control and just kill the clock. Mm-hmm. And that's what they needed to do. I mean, Philly wants to get to that game healthy. Yeah. You're already up substantially. God, yeah. I mean, even it was going. 20, it was uh, 21 to 7 at halftime. Right. But the minute Purdy was gone. Yeah. And you saw the first series with Josh Johnson. You, the minute you saw oh, that yeah. series, you're like, oh, it's yeah. Gone. Oh, yeah. It's like, he, you know, I think he just got too caught up in his own head about that. Could be. But regardless of the fact, Philly is on their way to the Super Bowl. Yeah, hey, yeah, Philadelphia PD, how grease in the light poles work? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Giants fans, how are you feeling about the Empire State Building? Okay, yeah, let's talk about that for a second. I mean, they do this sometimes. Like, I when they when but I for saw your rival. Yeah, no, they've done, they've done it. I mean, I don't think they've ever done it for like the Red Sox. Yeah, that's what I mean. No, I don't think they've ever. But for like major, like when we get to this point in the season, they've done this before. I, they've done it in years past. Now, have they ever done it for Philly? No, because I think it's a fairly recent thing that they've started doing. Yeah, like I don't think they did this the last time around. The Eagles were in the Super Bowl, you know. But they've done this before. They've got the capability to do this. So, like that, I saw them do this. And I'm like, oh yeah, this is this is no surprise. It was a surprise because it's the rival. Like, it's the division. Like, if San Francisco had gotten there, I would have understood. Well, you know what? Giants fans suck less, and they won't have to put up the colors. Yo, Pat coming in hot about this hey, one. Hey, you lost three times against them in one season. Just I'm saying. Not wrong. Not wrong. Just saying. Uh, win one game, and it might be different. Uh, switching over to the other game, which was the AFC Championship, which was between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Cincinnati Bengals in, uh, I, I won't say Burrowhead because, boy, that got proven otherwise. It is in, It was an Arrowhead. Uh, you had the Kansas City Chiefs defeat the Cincinnati Bengals by the final score of 23-20. Patrick Mahomes, 29 of 43 for 326 yards passing, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Joe Burrow, 26 of 41, 270 yards passing, one touchdown, two interceptions. Uh, Joe Burrow led Cincinnati in rushing with four carries, 30 yards, uh, no touchdowns. Isaiah uh, Pacheo led Kansas City in rushing with 10 carries, 26 yards, no touchdowns. Marquez Valdez Scantling led Kansas City in receiving with, goddamn, uh, six catches, 116 yards passing, only one touchdown. Uh, And T. Higgins led Cincinnati in receiving with six catches, 83 yards, and only one touchdown well the easiest way to say this is thanks refs yeah we have always said on this podcast and you can go through the entire catalog and i hope you do five star review everything we do appreciate that there is something about kansas city playing at home Uh that is always suspect Mm -hmm. it always is am i saying there the fix was in no but what i'm saying is at home cooking there's always something that happens that is very, very questionable mm-hmm. that you have to sit and go, okay, what's really going on here? I mean, we could say differently if they had ever played an AFC championship game outside of their own home mm-hmm. stadium, but they haven't. So as of this recording, you know, and whether you're listening to us in 2023, 2024, or 2029, you know, at, when we record this, they have yet to play. And then, hey, this is kudos to this is credit. To oh, sure, it's, sure. It's, it's incredibly hard to make it to the AFC champ to make it to the Super Bowl this many times in a row. You know, it's the incredibly hard to make it to this many conference championship games this many times in a row, and especially to make it to this many conference championships at home this many times in a row. So, yeah. kudos to them. But but still, you you just look at the the number of championship games they've had in their home stadiums and how many times there's been something that just seems a little suspect. And I'm not saying outright blatant, like three blind mice refs. Right, right, right. You know, but just something like, yeah, you know what? That doesn't pass the smell test. Yeah, no. And that's the easiest way to describe this. But I will say this, though. Remember how we said Buffalo played with no emotion? They just kind of went through the vote. They were just cycling through. Yeah. Cincinnati did the same thing here. I think also Cincinnati got caught feeling themselves a little yep. bit too much. They get they got caught in their own hype a little bit because you had the mayor 
of, of Cincinnati talking some trash, you know, whether it was him or some people from the team started calling Arrowhead Burrowhead yep. because of the number of times Joe Burrow has beaten the Kansas City Chiefs. You know, they went into their, their playoffs games prior to this with a chip on their shoulder and us against the world mentality, which, hey, for a lot of teams and a lot of sports works. We'll go back and look, oh, at some, absolutely. look at some of the teams, you know, that have had that mentality. You know, but I think what hurt them is they didn't keep that mentality. They started feeling themselves a certain type of way because, oh, I, I, you know, with Buffalo, it was all the feel-good story of, hey, DeMar Hamlin's here. And, DeMar, and, and oh, we're going to go out. We're going to beat Cincinnati and be, do, do this and do X, Y, and Z. And then, oh, we're not even going to factor you into into the home playoffs situation with, like, where the game could be playing, X, Y, and Z. And, and they had that chip. And then they started feeling themselves a little bit. And then they got a little cocky. Yeah. And, that's, and it definitely showed up that first half. Yeah. I think the fact they got it to such a slow start Mm -hmm. and that offensive line for Cincinnati, which we had always said is very suspect Mm -hmm. in its own right, played underperformance in that first half. Yes, I mean, Joe Burrow sacked five times. Yeah. So the fact that that was happening, you knew they were in trouble. Mm -hmm. And and normally, if you have a slow start in the regular season, you might be able to get away with it, depending on who you're playing. Right. There are some teams you won't be able to, some teams you will be able to. But when you get to the conference championship of your respective conference, you are playing the best of the best from your conference that season. You cannot make that mistake. You cannot, you know, have a slow start out the gate and and we're like, oh, hey, you know what? There's still three other quarters we can make a recovery. No, every quarter is important. Every minute, every possession is important. Exactly. And that's why it was so important for them to get back in this game. And they did. Joe Burrow let him down the field. Mm-hmm. The wide receiver core at Kansas City. All just were getting hurt left and right. Yeah, and the fact that uh, Valdez Scanling mm-hmm. had the game of his life. Yeah, definitely helped Kansas City because he stepped up in that moment. And you can't say that if, without his performance, they wouldn't have got there. I mean, Kansas City had ten people on the stat line uh, record at least one catch, which, right? Which is a lot. Oh, it was. I crazy. know. I know Kansas City likes to pass, but there's a that's a lot of dudes. It's a lot, but Scanling. Took a full advantage oh, yeah. of the moment. And this definitely helps him moving forward because Travis Kelsey came in a little banged up in his own right. Which, back spasms. Uh, yeah, which happens. Right. But with Cincinnati keying in on him so much, mm-hmm. they made Valdez Scanling beat him. Well, because that's the thing that Kansas City has been primarily focused on this year with the loss, uh, with the loss of uh, Tyreek Hill. Tyree Hill to Miami. You know, they really didn't have another receiver of the Tyreek Hill cap, uh, caliber. So they knew they're like, all right, a lot of teams knew, hey, all right, they don't really, they got receivers, you know, Mm -hmm. they got Valdez scaling, as we mentioned, you know, Juju Smith Schuster is there, although he had a really down year this year, all all things considered, you know, but you got McCole Hardman, who I don't think played until maybe this game this season. I don't remember him popping up on a stat line. He got hurt though early in this game too, though. Yeah. He only Mm -hmm. had two catches for 10, for 10 yards, but like he didn't play much of this year. So it was really the Travis Kelsey show and nothing else. And hi, being a Patriots fan. And when I remember those years when Gronk was a primary focus, they were going at his knees and they were going low and they're trying to knock, you know, chop the, the sequoia tree down, which you get to this point in the season and you got guys going low and hit you and trying to knock you out all year. You're going to come into this game. I'm really banged up. Yeah. So this is where you need that good receiving core to step up and Valdez scaling took opportunity because I guarantee you Reed went to him and said, hey, listen, Kelsey's banged up. I'm going to be real with you. We're going to need you and we're going to need some of the other guys to step up and, and Valdez scaling being the gamer he is. All right, coach. Yeah, no, he definitely played out of his mind. So kudos to him about that. Yeah. But I will say where the referees really came into play was the fourth quarter. Yeah. And I can't and I can't close this segment out without talking about this. Yeah. There was at least three moments that I thought, okay, this is something's fishy. Mm-hmm. And we talk about the last five minutes of the game. Kansas City is driving down the field. It's a three and nine. And Cincinnati gets a sack. Right. So this is putting them right about like the four minute mark. Sure. All of a sudden, at the top of the screen, somebody comes running in one of the refs and saying, "Oh no, mm-hmm. the, you got to reset the time clock." Sure. Or something. Sure. Or, and nobody heard the whistle. Mm. Now, granted, Arrowhead was loud. It's loud. Yeah. I'll give you that. But I think even the Kansas City sideline didn't even hear anything go on there. So uh, Arrowhead, scientifically proven, is the loudest stadium in the NFL. Right. So the fact that that happened after Cincinnati made a dramatic stop, they were going to get the ball back with plenty of time to go down the field and kick a field goal. Right. That hurt. And then Mahomes got another quick play in there too, Mm -hmm. which it was very questionable about the – it was a pass interference call. Right. That 
even the uh, the announcers and the one uh, analyst was saying, I wouldn't have called that. Mm-hmm. I would. That was very, very. Yeah. You have to swallow the whistle, especially you've done it all game. Right. Which we have talked about. Right. You got to call it from whistle to whistle. Yeah. But the big one, which I know has been making the rounds, and for the wrong reasons, too. Sure. Is the unnecessary roughness. Yeah, which that's something they got to look at this offseason. Between that and roughing the passer. Yeah, which I I will say this. I felt extremely bad for Joseph Asai. Mm-hmm. He was the line or the I believe he he plays linebacker for Cincinnati. Yeah, he does. And Mahomes, who is running on a bad leg, yeah, and you could see him grimace. In fact, that was that's what caused that one fumble uh-huh. he had. Uh huh. He was running out of bounds, and the momentum that Osai had. Mm-hmm. He he tapped him. Yeah, it wasn't a full shot. Oh, I know. This happened a couple of years ago when the Patriots were playing the Kansas City Chiefs, and Devin McCourty. <laughs> I'm using air quotes. Yeah. you can't see, but I'm using air quotes. Hit Patrick Mahomes, but it wasn't. You know, it wasn't exactly like an oh he lit him up type of head. He he just kind of hit him, and and I'll, I'm just gonna say it. Mahomes flopped. Yeah, you know, I'm not saying he's a flopper like an NBA player or somebody over in you know international soccer, but he flopped. Yeah, you know, Mahomes is known for this. You know, he doesn't get called out on it because oh, look at all the trick plays he can do. But yeah. is, is he a serial flopper? No, but does he have moments of it? Yes. Oh yeah, no, you can't deny that. And I agree with that's my opinion of him too, and I think he, this worked in his favor, and the fact that they. Gave an extra 15 yards mm-hmm. that late in the game. That was the backbreaker. Cincinnati had fought so hard to come back in this. And then you have that moment taken away by a momentum. It wasn't a late hit right. for a necessary roughness. Like, the foot just went out of bounds. He, he tried holding up. In fact, he got hurt on the play. And I will say this. I know the video is making the rounds of uh, his teammates calling him out in the locker room. Right. I understand the frustration. Oh, I do too. But time and place. And guess what? It's not like he tried to hit him late. No, yeah. Well, and that's the thing too is uh, roughing the passer has got to get looked at this season just because it's swung so far in the one direction of just yeah. everything's getting called that like it, the NFL has got to overcorrect itself just because even, even me, like I'm saying, we're like, I, I, I can see it in some instances, but there were more instances than not that I'm like, I don't think that's rough in the passer. No, like you have to be very clear and defined mm-hmm. about what that definition is. Now, if we're talking somebody doing like Brock Lesnar in WWE, oh, yeah, sure. Suplex, sure. like that, that's absolutely roughing the passer. But if it's like, Hey, they tapped them and the quarterback because of the m- momentum of them, you know, dropping back and they fell over, that's not roughing the passer. Exactly. Like, there's no point of trying to even do that. And the fact that this guy got called for it, and that was such a game changer, literally. Oh, yeah. You can't say otherwise. So, unfortunately, Cincinnati wound up losing. But Kansas City did what Kansas City does best. Mm -hmm. They win at home. Now, the Super Bowl is set. Yes. It's now going to be two weeks of hearing about Jason versus Travis Kelsey. <laughs> yeah. So I hope everybody's ready to hear that ad nauseum. First, well, and especially because it's the first time in NFL history you've had two brothers playing each other in the Super Bowl. Yeah. And I guarantee you there will be a news story every day about this. Probably, especially when Media Day rolls around, which Media Day is always a circus with the NFL. I mean, let's not forget there was the one year the Patriots played the Super Bowl and somebody asked Brady to marry her in a wedding dress. Yep. You know, it's all it's all sorts of bonkers, but that's going to that's gonna be a big, big thing. And stories on every news network and every, both regular cable news and sports news, you know. But the game's taking place Sunday, February 12th uh, at 6.30 p.m. Eastern on Fox. Uh, currently, as we record, the line is Philadelphia by one and a half. And the over-under is 49 and a half. Interesting. Uh-huh. And then one thing, too, uh, if you are betting on this, uh, just keep an eye on the lines. Yeah. They do fluctuate yeah, they a do. lot. Especially, and especially more so. They'll fluctuate a little bit between now and this coming Sunday. Yeah. But after this coming Sunday, when it gets close and close, they're going to really start fluctuating because that's when the big money is going to start coming in. Exactly. So if you're sold on an odd, not encouraging you, but just putting this out there. Mm-hmm. If you're sold on an odd, get your bet in early. Yeah. And only bet what you can afford to lose. Yeah, really. Don't put it in any more than you're willing to lose. Exactly. 
we we do like to stress that because I know we were having some uh, listeners hit us up. You're like, yeah, let's talk about the lines a lot. We don't we don't want to be held responsible for like any div- divorced <laughs> mar- marriages because you bet you know the fr- you bet the amount your mortgage on your house is on this game and you lost. Exactly. You bet what you can afford to lose without losing your home or anything else. Yeah. But that said, the Super Bowl is now set. Hit us up on that hashtag hashtag ODPHPod. What is your thoughts about the conference games in the AFC and NFC? We definitely want to have that conversation. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, all. I'm Frank. Join me and my friends as we talk about all things geek. Here at Geek Freaks Podcast, we go over the weekly news of everything in geekdom, from movies to TV, video games, and comic books. We also have a growing YouTube community. Join us as we go over everything in your geek life and share in the love of geekdom. Coming back for another segment here on the ODPH podcast, and it's time to talk a little wrestling. Wrestling. Because this past weekend was the start to the roads to WrestleMania. I like what you did there, man. Thank you. I like it. Uh, Road to WrestleMania, because as everyone knows, uh, this past Saturday was the WWE pay-per-view or premium live event uh, of the Royal Rumble, which took place, uh, of course, at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. But before we get into that, there's a little something something that dropped the day of uh, the Royal Rumble uh, on social media because uh, the WWE 2K23 video game is getting ready to come right, out right, very, right. very soon. Uh, we know that the cover is going to be a blank space because John Cena is on the cover of it. <laughs> he's, he's even made a joke to it in the ad promo for it. Go check it out. It's a funny video. Uh, but, of course, you know, they're starting to make the rounds. And some of the more prominent wrestlers featured in the game are doing some Q&A and some press uh, for the event. Uh, and Nick Houseman uh, was doing an interview with Seth Rollins. And uh, the subject of Phil Brooks came up, uh, also known as one CM Punk. Because, as everyone knows, still currently technically under contract with the folks over at AEW. But in all likelihood, that seems like it's going to be over and done with at some point, whether it's a buyout. In theory, yeah. Yeah, whether it's a buyout or they just let him sit in, at home and get paid until his contract expires. But Nick Houseman did ask, you, you know, hey, I know you've you've had some barn burners with, with CM Punk over the years. Do you want to see him come back to WWE? And uh, Seth Rollins said, and I quote, Oh, Philly Phil, <laughs> stay away, stay away, you cancer. Get away from me forever. Yeah, I don't like Phil. I don't like Phil. He's a jerk. Did we just figure that out? Did we just figure that out? Everyone in the room is like, oh, no. Did he say that? Yeah, no. He's a jerk. Come on. We figured it out over there. Uh, We knew it over here. I don't want him back. Go do something else. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you later. Close quote. Now, whether this was in character or not, it was absolutely not in character. Uh, he used the voice of the character, but I think this was, in fact, a 100% shoot how he actually feels. Because while I think it is possible for him to have respect for him as a performer, I think for him as a human being, Seth Rollins is not a fan. No. I mean, as much as we talk about CM Punk's wrestling ability, uh, he is a very polarizing guy outside of the ring. Mm-hmm. And there is quite a vocal contingent of performers that do not mm-hmm. like him. And yeah. Seth has always been one of them. So the fact that a reporter asked him about it, well, I I love the answer. Yeah, I do because, too. Because Seth could have taken the diplomatic approach, and probably approach a lot of people would have done as well. You know, I don't really want to speculate on that. He's he's under contract with the folks over at the other federation. You know, and who knows what his plans are? I don't want to speak for him. But you know, if he if he ends up doing that, you know, hey, more power to him. No, he didn't. He didn't go the diplomatic approach. He basically went, no, fuck you, stay away. Yeah, and you know what? It was smart because. The more I listen to that quote, the more I laugh. Mm-hmm. It's not good for my throat. But it also sends a message. Mm-hmm. This is how at least one person, and what I would imagine is one of the locker room leaders. Feels. Uh-huh, and exactly. And I think that's a very loud statement uh-huh. to anybody thinking he'd be welcome back with open arms. Nope. I think, if anything, they'll let him do an interview segment and send him on the way. Yep. 
But other than that, I think this is very telling oh, yeah. of the temp of the WWE locker room heading into the roads to WrestleMania, like Pat put Thank so you. eloquently. Thank you. Uh, and now speaking about the Royal Rumble, we've got some records to talk about because it was a record weekend for WWE in every sense of the word. Uh, reading from an article on Forbes.com, uh, some of the highlights uh, from this uh, past weekend in the records, the, w- there was a $7.7 million gate, which is an all-time gate record for the Royal Rumble event. Uh, merchandise sales were up 135%, which is also an all-time record for the Royal Rumble. Uh, I know Triple H said in the post-card uh, press conference that oh, somebody asked him, well, what's one of the things you learned from this year for next year? And he said, bring more merch because we sold out on day one. Uh, so yeah. merchandise is up. And I know Cody yeah. wrote, I saw Cody Rhodes tweeted about it. You know, hey, listen, they're going to have the, the the store restocked tomorrow. So, hey, merchandise is up. Uh, sponsorship revenue was up 200%, which was also, ongoing theme here, uh, an all-time Royal Rumble record. Uh, over 20 million views across all WWE platforms for Roman Reigns' Sami Zayn videos. Uh, and then over 26.5 million views across WWE and Logan Paul's platforms for their high-flying springboard spot uh, between Logan Paul and Ricochet. Uh, and also of note, while I don't think anything has been officially said, I think it's been reported that uh, the the viewership for this on Peacock was the highest viewed uh, pay-per-view in the company's history on Peacock. Correct. So a lot of eyes interested in this, uh, a lot of thought people looking forward to it and, and checking it out. So we're going to get into some of the card and break down what happened. Uh, and starting off, we have a little bit of a surprise. We started off with the 30-man Royal Rumble match, the men's Royal Rumble yeah. match. Went one hour, 11 minutes, and 42 seconds. Uh, Cody Rhodes emerged victorious, uh, eliminating Gunther who, Gunther, who entered at number one. Uh, to win. So Cody is your uh, winner of the men's Royal Rumble match. And shout out to Gunther uh, because he broke the traditional 30 man. Uh, record for the Royal Rumble. I think Daniel Bryan is technically longer because it was the four. It was the forty or fifty man, whatever the hell it yeah, was. Yeah, it was a, a, the greatest Rumble ever. Greatest Royal Dodson's, Rumble. Yeah. yeah, Daniel Bryan's technically <laughs> longer, but that's when it was fifty. So of course, but Gunther, the official longest entrant in Royal Rumble, uh, traditional Royal Rumble history. And you know what? The, for the entrance, you know, went kind of the way I thought it would. Gunther and Sheamus starting off very good and very strong. <laughs> Hold your teeth in. Uh, you know, but nothing too crazy. He didn't get a Kofi spot this year, but you know what? I'm fine with well, that. Well, he botched it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was the one. He went to the chair to the outside, and the chair oh, kind of collapsed. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and he had his one. They were trying to sell it. They're like, oh, no, he's good. His one foot is still in. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, no, he tried it again. So the second year in a row, which, I mean, it's it's awful to see that because yeah. he always comes up with these really creative ways to get back in the match after yeah. he's been thrown out. Yeah, yeah. But overall, I mean, this was a really good men's Royal Rumble. One, yeah. of, the, one of the best matches they've had. No, oh, better than the last couple of years. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I think you have to really take a look at a few superstars in this match and see their breakout performances. Yes. The first one is not Cody Rhodes. It's Gunther. Yes. And if you are not sold on how high his stock is with WWE after this, I don't know what to tell you. They see a main eventer in him, and rightfully so masterful performance and I don't doubt that he has a very big name to face at uh, WrestleMania for the Intercontinental title. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say right now it'll probably be Drew McIntyre. That's probably. My, that's my early guess. But I thought the performance he did was really take advantage of the moment he was in and really told a great story. Oh yeah. I also thought Logan Paul, love him or hate him, he makes the needle move. He does. And that is what you want, if you are a wrestling company, you want people to generate social media buzz. You want to have casual fans talking. It all adds up to revenue. It all adds up to views. It all adds up to stuff you can spin out to other places. Mm-hmm. Logan Paul does that. And the fact that him and Ricochet did that spot. Yeah. And I understand there's some criticism on the internet about, oh, what's already been done before. Listen, wrestling has been around for how many years now? A, a long time. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of duplication I'll say and borrowing. That at this point, there's not a lot left that hasn't been done. Exactly. So I just thought it was a cool thing to see Logan, who we don't really appreciate for how athletic he is. Right. Doing that spot with Ricochet, who is a highlight reel every time he takes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well-known high flyer. You know, a step to the ring. So to see that, that was a moment that everybody stood on and you know really paid attention to. Mm-hmm. And then... 
Cody Rhodes coming in. Yeah, well, a couple of the other ones are surprised. Uh, Johnny Gargano making the return. Yeah, you know, wasn't was qu- wasn't quite sure he was going to be able to make it because of the injury, but he did in fact make it back in. You know, uh, also of note, uh, Brock Lesnar coming in and lasting two minutes and twenty eight seconds. Yeah, I didn't see that one coming uh, because he was eliminated by Bobby Lashley. So uh, clearly, we're going to get a Bobby Lashley versus. Uh, Brock Lesnar match at WrestleMania. Although I will say they did tease a little bit Brock Lesnar versus Gunther, to which I say, fucking give it to me. Oh, yeah. Holy shit. Uh, so that was good. You know, also you had uh, Rey Mysterio technically enter, but he never showed up. And I know everyone online's going, well, Rey, Cody didn't eliminate 30 people. Rey Mysterio never entered. So that so that means the bloodline's going to come back with that. And that's why he's not going to be able to challenge Roman because he's going to he's going to face somebody from the bloodline and lose. And so Cody won't be the men's world. Ro- Stop. Stop doing mental gymnastics and jumping through hoops just to make your own narrative work. You're going to get pissed off when it doesn't happen. Uh, he never showed up, and there is precedent for this because, as you pointed out, I didn't know this. I was a little confused. You pointed out that there was a uh, match, and there were one at the Rumble, and what was it, 91? I want to say it was 91. 91, and there's been other ones, though, but Randy Savage was not able to answer the call, I guess you could say, or he did not come out before the next entrance. So when that happens, you forfeit your spot and you're eliminated. Yeah, it's basically like how in the NFL draft, yep. if you don't get your pick to the podium in time, yep. you you lose it, and then usually they just keep sliding you back. Yep. In WWE, they just take your spot away. Yep. So uh, clearly, as shown, he was taken out by Dominic Mysterio. Dominic yeah. Mysterio came out with the mask, although, as, as everyone pointed out, Dominic Mysterio can't even tear a mask. I don't, need, I don't even want to get into how yeah. bad he is. Yeah. He is awful. Yeah, he is. Uh, Booker T was the lone, uh, I guess you could say, returning Hall of Famer, uh, showing up and getting eliminated 42 seconds in uh, by Gunther. And listen, I know people are kind of take given given some flack about it, you know. Uh, but Booker T did talk about this. Uh, uh, did talk about this, uh, saying, "quote I want to thank everybody at the in, in everybody in the arena at the Alamo Dome for showing the old man the old man some love. It was off the chains. It was electrifying. It was pandemonium. It was unbelievable. I got to thank all of those guys that were in the Royal Rumble for just letting me participate and getting to go back and see what that feels like just one more time and just walk that aisle. I must say it was an awesome." Awesome, awesome time. I was sitting in at the table at the kickoff show and I got a text message. It was the invite telling me, book, you're in the rumble. I'm old school. I went down in the Winnebago. Something told me, bring your gear. Make sure you are ready just uh, so you don't have to get ready. Stay ready. And boom, there it was. The text message came through and I said, okay, here we go. I think Ray went down and I think they had to fill that spot. Close quote. Uh, but hmm. then he did say uh, Gunther did an awesome job of making history as well. That guy is going to be a major, major player here in WWE for a long time, you know, and he basically said, Hey, let, you know, cause people are like, Oh, you know, Oh, you got jobbed out by Gunther. He did say, quote, let me just say this. I want to say this publicly just so everybody can hear me. I would rather be jobbed out by Gunther than Gunther be jobbed out by me any day of the week. Close quote. Well, yeah. I mean, I th- okay. One thing wrestling fans need to realize here: Booker T is a Hall of Famer. Mm-hmm. He is not going to be coming. He's, yeah, he's not coming back. No, on a regular basis. No, God, no. This was a nostalgia moment. Being the event, it was in Texas. Well, and he's also, you think about it, one of the few guys they have left from Texas that can go. Yeah. I mean, Stone Cold in wrestling shape, but according to reports, he's been given multiple offers to appear at WrestleMania. He's turned them all down. So Stone Cold wasn't showing up. Right. Undertaker's retired. Yep. Shawn Michaels has said he's retired. Yep. Mark Henry, we know, was at a watch party with some other wrestlers, including some folks from AEW. So Mark Henry wasn't going to Well, he's AEW signed. So right. So Mark, yeah. Mark Henry ain't going to show up. So the, the list of guys they have available from Texas anymore. A little slim. It's slim, but at the same time, okay. So Booker T eliminated eight people. Just th- throwing that number out. Sure, there. sure. Where does that get the talent that's still going to be wrestling after sun after Saturday? That gets them nowhere. Exactly. So the fact that Booker can put over Gunther by allowing him to eliminate him, that's a big deal. And that goes into creating stars for the future, passing it forward. Mm-hmm. So for fans that were losing their minds about it, stop. Well, and also to the fans that are like, oh, they're, they're <laughs> complaining there weren't enough surprise returns. Yeah, that was there too. I mean, listen, it, it would make sense from a nostalgia purpose, but the roster is so loaded at this point, you don't really need it. Right. You know, it makes sense if you got kind of a light roster, you got a bunch of guys, unfortunately, out with injury, and you're not going to be able to. But this roster is loaded. I mean, you we're not. I'm not going to run through the entire list of folks in this that were in this rumble, but just a couple of names of note that did not make it. 
Luke Gallows was not in this world. Mm-hmm. Carl Anderson was not in this world. Yep. Was not in this match. Dolph Ziggler was not in this match. And this Surprising. Is, this is his first Rumble match he's missed in like 10 years. Yeah. You know, so, uh, and I can go through a whole bunch more, but those are just some of the major names that weren't even on this thing. You know, so when you've already got it packed to the gills with folks from your main roster and the, to the point where some of them are not making it onto the show, where the hell are you going to fit in some of these uh, these extra guys? Yeah. You know, so... I understand people's frustration, but you know, when the match is good, you you don't need those those nostalgia guys. For me, if you if you know the match isn't going to be that good because you got a bunch of injuries, sure, fill it up with some of those those comeback guys. But you, you but let's face it, what has it been the last couple of years? Hurricane Holmes twice, mm-hmm. Car- Carlito. Yeah. All right, that's fine and dandy, but what did you get out of it? You really didn't get much. Yeah, you, you only get a quick pop from the crowd, but they were already excited to be there, so you yeah. didn't re- you didn't need to do anything special for yeah. it. You needed to build up the stars you have, and that's what they really focused on. And I thought mm-hmm. they did a great job in both matches. Yeah. Uh, Edge, of course, did make his return. Uh, eliminated after only one minute and four seconds yeah. uh, by Finn Balor. But, hey, listen, we knew this was coming. Exactly. You know, this is this is nothing surprised, though. <laughs> Shout out to, to his wife, Beth Phoenix, for showing up after they started brawling on the stage uh, between the members of Judgment Day. You know, Rhea Ripley showed up, attacked. Uh, Edge and then Beth Phoenix came out and gave uh, Rhea Ripley a spear of a hell of a moment, a, a hell of a spot there. Uh, as you mentioned, you do, we did have Logan Paul return at number nine, uh, wrestled ten minutes and fifty seven seconds, which hey, for a guy coming off an ACL tear, not bad, not bad at all, not bad at all. You know, had had that awesome moment with Ricochet. If you have not seen, uh, go check it out. Uh, and then entry number thirty was of course the highly uh, questioned one. You know, is it going to be Rock? Is it going to be Stone Cold? Is it going to be John Cena? No, it was Cody Rhodes. Uh, Cody Rhodes ended up wrestling uh, for 15 minutes and eight seconds, uh, eliminating five people and then eliminating, as I mentioned before, Gunther to become the men's Royal Rumble winner. And of course, he's going to be challenging Roman Reigns for the WWE Undisputed Universal Championship at WrestleMania. As of this recording, it is that is how it is being phrased. So whether it's for it sounds like for right now, it's going to be for both belts. But there's a lot of time in between now and WrestleMania, so something could change that it ends up only being for one belt. But as of this recording, it's for both. Yeah, something could change, but I don't see them doing any changes till after no, Mania, to be honest no. with you. Uh, next up was the uh, Mountain <coughs> Dew pitch black match where Bray Wyatt defeated LA Knight via pinfall in five minutes and five seconds. And, of course, as we mentioned last week, we had no idea what the fuck this match was going to be. Right. You know, obviously it's sponsored by Mountain Dew pitch black, which they brought back. You know, so we all figured out it's going to be a lights out match. And kind of was but it was a uh, lights out match with neon lights which gave her admittedly it was a cool effect it was a cool effect it was a cool effect you know you had the neon gear on by the two guys bray's face was had neon paint on it which lit up you know it it, was it the best match of all time i've ever seen no no was it what it needed to be sure yeah you know it it was fun you know you had i understand why some of the folks in the crowd might not have liked it because you know if you're sitting at a spot where you can't exactly see the screen all that well it was it, some of the stuff might have been lost on you but it it was what it was and it was fine they just wanted hardy yeah <laughs> yeah yeah no i mean it was what it was cuz you just needed a progressive braze character mm-hmm. we knew this was not going to be a classic this was going to be something for entertainment yeah it served its purpose and moved the storyline along I thought the the visual effects for the home crowd was great. And if you were there live, you probably didn't get that much of an effect to it. Um, right. I thought the Uncle Howdy stuff was just unnecessary, but that's me. Yeah. And especially he missed uh, L.A. Knight, so I'm like, I'm fully convinced he's Darby Allen. He's a kid. I kid. I kid. <laughs> well, I, th- I think that was a deliberate thing, but I don't agree with exactly how they <laughs> went about showing it because it was very evident from the camera angle he missed. Yeah, yeah. So it is what it is, but it serves its purpose. Yeah. On to the next one. Uh, next up was the uh, women's Royal Rumble match. Uh, we had Rhea Ripley uh, win going wire to wire, becoming the first woman uh, to, in the women's Royal Rumble history to go wire to wire to win. Uh, the match lasted uh, one hour, one minute, and three seconds. I uh, got to give a shout out to Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan because they both went wire to wire, although Rhea Ripley one second longer because Liv was the last person eliminated. Uh, a couple of surprises with. With this one, uh, you did have uh, Roxanne Perez from NXT make an appearance. Uh, she was eliminated by all three members of the uh, Damage Control, uh, eliminated after just four minutes and 34 seconds. And I know some folks were wondering, oh, that, that was a little short for 
Got a little thing coming this Saturday called Vengeance Day. The next NXT. You know what? Didn't pretty... even put that together. Yeah, I know some people online were complaining. Oh, that was really uh, short that for, makes the, sense. for the NXT Women's Champion. Why is it so short? She's got a she's got a matchup this I mean, Saturday. That actually makes perfect sense. So they don't want her getting hurt before that match. Uh, a couple other ones. You had <laughs> Zoe Stark from NXT uh, showed up. Uh, you know, uh, was eliminated by uh, Sonya Deville. Uh, did last almost a half hour, twenty six minutes and thirty four seconds. So definitely a great showing from her. Uh, you also had Chelsea Green make her return. Uh, eliminated in just five seconds. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what else can you say about that one? Yeah, uh, did she did, however, show up on Monday Night Raw with her new character gimmick, and the rumors online were true. She's playing a Karen. Yeah. Oh, my God, this is incredible. Yeah, she's going to run with this one. Yeah, she is. Uh, Got to note, Zelina Vega did show up showing up as a character from, uh, was it Street, Street Fighter, Fighter 6? And it was announced that she's going to be one of the announcers yes. uh, in the video game, you know, one of the people who commentate the fights. So that's freaking awesome. That was amazing. Yeah, that was awesome. Uh, you did have uh, Michelle McCool... Uh, show up in the match and pro- possibly the coolest entrance uh, entry of the whole weekend uh, because she was sitting front row behind the commentators with her daughters, her music kits. And she's like, wait, what? And her daughter goes, Ma, get in there, ma. And the, she takes off her jacket. Goes, All right. She hops the fence, hops the barricade, gets in the ring and then proceeds to wrestle for, uh, what is it? 13 minutes and 53 seconds in Uggs. Yeah. It was wild, uh-huh. but it, it, it did what it needed to do for her. It was a good surprise. It definitely got the crowd back into yeah. it. Yeah. You know, no real issues with that one. No. Uh, and then the last, supr- <laughs> well, second to last surprise entrant uh, was from mm. NXT, and that was Indy Hart- uh, Hartwell making her Rumble debut. Uh, she was eliminated by Sony Deville in four minutes and 51 seconds. But, hey, good to see Indy wrestling uh, on the main roster. Fun little video that was uh, taped backstage. She talked about her experience. I, I know it's on the NXT Twitter page if you go and look it up over there. But she was talking about that, and uh, she got to meet her trainer. It was uh, one baby wrestling, and she fired baby wrestling. Cause she, oh, geez. she goes, oh, you're fired. I, I didn't win the rumble. And, and Candice LeRae goes, you can't fire. You can't fire. She kept a kayfabe. She's like, you can't fire your brother. You know, then you, you come back next year. Uh, so then a couple other ones. Uh, lastly, and certainly not lastly, oh, maybe lastly. Uh, number 30 was Nia Jax. Next. Uh, well, she was eliminated in one minute and 57 seconds by Asuka, Lacey Evans, Liv Morgan, Mia Yim, Michelle McCool. Nikki Cross, Piper Niven. Oh, that's another one we got to know. Piper Niven was back as Piper Niven, not Thank God, not Dewdrop. Yeah, uh, Raquel Rodriguez, Rhea Ripley, Shotzi, and Sonya Deville. Yeah, no, this it served its purpose for what it needed to. Uh, the only thing I thought was scary for her, mm-hmm. uh, she went dead weight for Rhea. Yes, yeah, she did. That was not a good look. Yes, yeah, she did. In my opinion, that was not a smart plan. So, a little comfort at least of this recording to some folks who are afraid she might be resigned. Don't think it's the case. I know she's got the shirt on the shop, and everyone's like, "Oh, that means she's resigned." They put a rock shirt on the on the yeah. shop, and he never showed up. You know, so. It, but the other thing too is there was a poster uh, posted on social media for an event she's going to be attending here in the next couple of weeks. It says, uh, "For you know, formerly known as." Okay. On, on the event. So right. she's still taking bookings <clears throat> for indie stuff under her actual name with the formerly known as. And also, as of this recording on the WWE website under the superstar section, she, she's still in the alumni section. So mm. maybe they just needed a body to fill and she was yeah. and she was available. I mean, it makes sense in that. And that, concerning that aspect, yeah, it makes sense. So at least as of this recording, that was a one-time appearance. She's not re-signed, but hey, things could change. Yeah, I mean, I don't doubt seeing her getting re-signed. I'm just not a super big fan of her stuff. I know some people are not thrilled about it because uh, Zelina Vega did post a uh, thing to, I believe it was her TikTok, uh, basically how you get when you get put in a room with somebody who is very... Uh, you know, uh, opinionated about their thoughts and views. And that was not hard to figure out who she was talking about. Yeah. That's true. Uh, so I know the folks backstage probably weren't thrilled about it, but it does appear to, at least at this point to be a one off. Right. So Rhea Ripley is your, uh, women's Royal rumble winner, uh, and announced last night on Monday night raw, as we recorded that she's going to be facing Charlotte flair, uh, at WrestleMania for yeah. the, uh, WWE SmackDown women's championship, because she said, Hey, listen, I've, you know, I faced uh, Charlotte a couple years ago at WrestleMania for the NXT Women's Championship, and she and she beat me. I've never beaten Charlotte. And the other thing she pointed out, too, I think it was at the press conference, yep. if she wins the SmackDown Women's Championship, she becomes a Grand Slam champion. Correct. 
So it will be Charlotte right. Flair versus Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania. It's a much better storyline. Yes. And especially, I know we didn't talk about Bianca and Alexa Bliss. There wasn't really anything to talk about there. It was a short match because yeah. Bianca is taking the belt to Mania. Yeah. The only thing that was going to be happening there was Uncle Howdy was going to be possessing Alexa. Well, and especially, too, that, that match and that feud was a one-off, and I'll get, <clears> to, I'll get to what's going to happen with the Raw women's uh, belt here in a minute. Uh, but so, yeah, that match happened. Uh, be, just to give him credit, Bianca did defeat Alexa Bliss in 7 minutes, 35 seconds. Uh, but for the women's Rumble match, I, you know, if I had to rank the two Rumble matches, I'd say the women's was slightly better. I love the women's one. The, the I, ending. The the ending was nuts because you had, what was it? You had Liv, Rhea, and Asuka all on the apron. Which, crazy clown face Asuka. Crazy clown face Asuka. Batch it crazy Asuka's back. Uh, showed up on Raw last night as crazy Asuka wearing the weirdest... Uh, combination of suit jacket and colors i've ever seen on a, any human being yeah uh and was talking to i well, i forget who she was carmella she was, yes she was talking to carmella because carmella's back and it looks like she's going to be on raw now uh she was talking to carmella and carmella's talking on her smack and like oh i'm mel mel is money and all this other stuff I and mean, oscar's just looking at her and oscar just smiles and her teeth are like blue or green or something and then some of the liquid that she uses to spray the mist starts leaking out of her mouth. Yeah. Out of starts leaking Straight out of her out mouth. Straight out of a horror movie. Holy shit, it was awesome. Yeah, no, it was awesome to see. And Asuka coming back too was a big moment too, and especially for that ending where you had Liv, yeah, Rhea, and Asuka on the apron. On the apron. And Asuka went to mist mm-hmm. Rhea. Rhea ducks out of the way. Liv gets hit with it. Yep. Rhea does a leg sweep. And gets Asuka off the ring post after yep. she had, she got a great performance there at the Rumble too, and then Rhea is basically hanging on to the top row for, for dear life for dear life because she slips up, and you see Liv is blinded and she's try she can't even see where Rhea is almost pulled it off almost pulled it off which did great drama and then you see a head scissors to get Liv off the apron to mm-hmm. end the match and you know what honestly I love the idea of doing Rhea and in Charlotte with the story. It's much better than doing Rhea and Bianca because we've already done that before. Right. With the storyline of the Grand Slam Championship, it sells it a lot better. Mm-hmm. The Bianca, you know, now I'm just kind of curious who she's going to be facing at Mania. Well, uh, we'll, get, we'll get to that in a little bit. We'll mention that because uh, that is going to tie into what happens. It's going to happen uh, at Elimination Chamber. Uh, but getting back to this match, uh, great match. Overall, loved it. Loved everything about it. And then lastly, and certainly not leastly, uh, the main event of the evening was in a singles matchup for the undisputed WWE <laughs> Universal Championship. Throw those one, throw that index finger up in the sky between Roman Reigns with Paul Heyman and Sami Zayn in his corner. Uh, because as was said at the, on the pre-show, uh, Roman Reigns not thrilled with Sami Zayn. You're sticking by me. You're sticking by my side the whole night, which should have clued folks in very early that he was not going to show up in the Rumble. Yep. Uh, but taking on Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns, emerge victorious, pinning Sami Zayn or pinning Sami. Pending Kevin Owens uh, in 19 minutes and 15 seconds to retain his undisputed Universal Championship. But it, not about the match that happened. It's what happened afterwards that everyone's talking about. So afterwards, you know, uh, Sammy ate the pin. Or, God, I keep saying Sammy. Kevin ate the pinfall. And then the bloodlines all, all comes out. And then, you know, they all start super kicking uh, Kevin Owens. And it and it's like an absurd amount of times they start super kicking him. Like, it was like one. He got to be uncomfortable. It was Jimmy kicked him. Mm. Jay kicked him. Jimmy kicked him. Jay kicked him. It, I know you said on 607 TWS that it reminded you of the uh, Young Bucks super kicks at ROH where there was the counter. You're not wrong. That's yeah. I had the same vibe off of it thinking about it. You know, but so they do that. They, you know, then they get a pair of handcuffs and they handcuff both of Kevin's wrists to the ring ropes. So he's just kind of sitting there with his with his arms restrained. And all the meanwhile, this is going on. You can see Sammy getting more and yeah. more and more uncomfortable with this. And there's a couple of times like he wants to step in and say, no, no, "Stop! Don't do this! Why are we doing this?" And he kind of he kind of stops himself. So then they go to attack him. Uh, Roman says, "Hey, give me a chair! Give me a chair!" So somebody, whether it was the Usos or or Solo, I forget who it was. They go out. They go to the timekeepers area. They get him a chair. And they bring back a chair. Roman wants to go attack Sam, uh, Kevin, and Sammy steps in and says, "Hey, listen, stop! This this is beneath you. This is not about. This is not what you do. You know he's beaten. He's he's done with. You know, let's just move on." And Roman go and Roman paused. And the instant he paused, I I knew I was like, "He's gonna make Sammy do it." And sure as shit, he hands Sammy the chair and goes, "Fine, you take care of it. You take him out." You know, and Sammy can't do it. He's he's sitting there. He's pausing. He's like he's really thinking about it. And Roman says, "Like, come on." Pull the trigger. Do it. Pull the trigger. And Sammy just can't do it, can't do it. So finally Roman steps in front of him, uh, and you can see Sammy then wind up, swing the chair, 
hit Roman in the back. Roman falls almost the exact same way he did when Seth Rollins hit him with the chair. But Sami Zayn has officially turned his back on the bloodline. He looks at the Usos and, and he says, listen, I'm sorry. I couldn't do it. I, I had to do what I had to do. You know, so then they go and, and they start beating up on Sammy. And what was it? Was it Jimmy or Jay? I can't remember which one it was. Uh, one of the Uso brothers, you know, can't do it. He goes, no, nah, I, I can't. Oh, it was Jay. It was Jay. It was Jay. Jay can't. He's uh-huh. like, I can't do I can't do it. You know, I'm, I'm not going to tag him. And he leaves and with Jimmy going, what are you doing, bro? We're, you know, we're, we're family. You know, this is blood. You know, he's not family. He's not blood. And he goes walking up the ring, you know, holding back tears, you know, and he posted a message on social media later, you know, with the photo of the two of them said, you know, run it back. So will we get Jay versus, uh, you know, Roman Yo, again? maybe, I, I mean, know. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but so you had the, the two of them, uh, you know, both Kevin and Sammy were laid out. Uh, but the one thing of note, I want to point out that I don't see a lot. I see a couple people talking about, it, but not enough is, the, and you almost couldn't pick up on it because Michael Cole was talking about it, but it's when the little graphic at the bottom, right. You know, the copyright popped up. Roman did say to solo, hmm. he said to solo, we're at war now. Um, it's time for blood. Yeah. I mean, first and foremost, <laughs> this whole segment was cinema. Uh-huh. Top to bottom. The emotions, and this is why it's it's so important, like whether you hear us talk about it on the ODPH or 607 TWS, this is why storylines matter so much in televised wrestling. When you connect with an audience like Sami Zayn has done. Mm-hmm which he was supposed to be a throwaway character in this storyline. Yep. You now have an audience that is so connected and captivated by his you know, dynamic with Jey Uso, yeah. with Roman Reigns, with Kevin Owens, who's been his lifelong friend. It just poured out on screen that the buildup was here and how Roman has slowly been seeding this jealousy for him. Mm-hmm. And even to the point where... Sammy jumped in the way and said, "You know, you're you're you know you're below this, yeah, or you're above this. You don't need to do this. This is, this is below you." And he's like, "Yeah, you do it now." And you can see how he starts, you know, face planting him. Mm-hmm. You can see the bill that you know for everything that Sammy's had to go through, where Roman has yeah. been the one doubting him to see him turn his back, and that's why Jay is so conflicted. Mm-hmm. And Jay Uso was the main event or the MVP of this segment, absolutely, hundred percent, because he was like, I, "I can't do this because he's." He's been won over by Sammy. Yeah. And what Sammy has done for him. Yeah. And gone out of his way to win him over. Yeah. Like, that's the craziest thing about it. I mean, this this whole angle has <clears throat> given Roman nuclear heat that he has not seen since the night after WrestleMania where he beat Taker. Yeah. Where if you have not seen that clip, highly recommend you go to YouTube and check it out. Go If you got Peacock, go look it up. It's after WrestleMania 33, I want to say. I think so. Where where Roman B. Undertaker at WrestleMania came out, let opened up Raw the next night, and for 15 minutes stood in the ring, said four words. Yep. It's my yard now at the end of the 15 minutes. But the for that entire 15 minutes, every time he rose the mic to try and say something, the crowd would start booing. Yep. And the crowd would start chanting, and and every possible expletive was uttered at Roman, including "fuck you, Roman." Yep. Which he heard tonight, or, or Saturday night at the Royal Rumble. But this has given him nuclear heat. He has not had since the, the night after WrestleMania 33. Which this is going to be incredible to watch. Now, was the segment, you know, the whole post thing, a little too long? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, it, it was. It told a story, and the story was phenomenal. But the match got over at like. 12.05, 12.10 Eastern, which that went long because they decided to throw a concert in the middle of it yeah. at 11.30. Why? I have no goddamn idea, but that was a poor idea. But then it proceeded. Did The whole thing didn't get over until almost 12.30. So was it a little long in the tooth? Yeah, a little bit, you know, for, for what it was. It was, you know, after midnight on a Eastern on a Sunday, you know, on the East Coast. But was the story incredible? Absolutely. Goddamn. Lutely. Oh, yeah, no, it, it was the perfect way to, to end the story right now. Yeah. And start the new chapter going into Mania. You couldn't have planned it any better. Yeah. The crowd was eating it up. The, you know, fuck you, Roman chants were absolutely nuclear. There, There's a video going around on social media. I know it was on the Squared Circle subreddit, but I'm <laughs> sure it's probably going around TikTok, Twitter, everywhere else. But somebody who was in the front row at a kind of a diagonal angle still had a shot of 
the commentary team, which we got to give a shout out to the commentary team. They kept it, the crew backstage kept it secret to Michael Cole and Corey Graves that Pat McAfee was going to be there, which that was, that was their genuine reactions because Michael Cole said on the Pat McAfee show, we had no idea you were going to show. So I'm prepping with Corey for the day for just a two man uh, announced team. Please, WWE, if you are listening to us, make that three-man team the permanent three-man team for all pay-per-views going forward because the chemistry they have between the three of them, oh yeah, chef's kiss. That was incredible. It was amazing. But when the crowd was chanting, fuck you, Roman, there's a video going around where somebody took a video. Somebody, I don't know why they were doing this, but hey, kudos to you, was videoing with their phone what the commentary team was doing while this was going on and and. Graves and Cole don't really react to it because they're used to it. They, you know, Cole's heard it before after WrestleMania 33. But the instant the crowd starts chanting, fuck you, Roman, the first time they say it, Pat doesn't really react to it, but he can tell they're saying something. And then the second time they say, fuck you, Roman, there's a genuine shocked, you know, expression and, and body motion on Pat's face. Like he can't believe what's being said. Yeah. Uh, it, I mean, overall, I mean, I think everything they did for this. Really set the tone for Mania. Mm -hmm. And now the Elimination Chamber has become a must-watch pay-per-view. Absolutely. Now, current rumor is, and I say rumor, is it's going to be Roman versus Sami Zayn Uh, at the Elimination Chamber. Two matches we do know are going to take place. Mm. Uh, Those were announced both last night by Adam Pearce on Monday Night Raw, is that one of the Elimination Chamber matches is going to be for the WWE United States Championship. Traditionally in the past, Mm. it's been for one of the belts. You know, whoever wins the Rumble challenges for one belt. Elimination Chamber, you go to challenge for the other belt. Well, not the case because both belts are getting challenged by the Royal Rumble winner. So it's going to be for the U.S. Championship. Uh, Austin Theory, the champion, will be in the Elimination Chamber match uh, of the other announced entrants uh, we know of because they had three matches on raw last night there were qualifying matches for this event the other uh the other uh two other participants we know of are seth freaking rollins bronson reed and johnny gargano there's two other wrestlers that are to be determined we'll find those out at a later date uh those are going to be uh qualifying matches on the february 6th episode of raw those are going to be between angelo dawkins and damian priest and elias versus montez ford Hmm. So that's going to be one of the Elimination Chamber matches and then also announced by Adam Pearce on Monday Night Raw because Rhea Ripley is challenging Charlotte for the uh, SmackDown Women's Championship. they got to figure out who Bianca Belair's uh, challenger is going to be at WrestleMania. So the other Elimination Chamber match is going to be for a match against the Raw Women's Championship at WrestleMania. And your participants thus far are Asuka, Liv Morgan, Nikki Cross, Raquel Rodriguez and two wrestlers to be determined. Uh, and the note should note uh, the fifth spot in the women's chamber match will be decided in a fatal four way match on the February 6th episode of Monday Night Raw between Candice LeRae, Carmella, Mia Yim, and Piper Nevin. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. You know, that's a great match, too. Uh huh. I tell you what, I like Liv. I do too. I don't, I I do don't, too. I don't doubt Liv sneaking in there. But I would love to see Oscar. But I think Oscar is going to take on Alexa Bliss. Probably. But I'm a. I'll make that early prediction right now. I think that's going to be Liv Morgan's match. I think so. That'd be a hell of a match too. Oh yeah. Bianca. Oh yeah. Oh, that'll be great. Oh god, yeah. The other thing too, that February sixth. So we've got the two matches for the final two spots in the men's chamber match. You've got the uh, tr- you got the fatal four way match for the one of the two spots left in the women's chamber match. The other one too is they're going to be do they're going to do. Becky versus Bailey in the in the steel cage match. Oh, the one they were meant to do on the one they meant to do on Raw thirty, but got cut for time. <laughs> yeah, uh, Becky came out and well, uh, Bailey came out for a second time because EO Sky had a matchup earlier in the night against Candice LeRae, where EO picked up the victory. Bailey came back out to kind of shit all over uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and, and talk. And uh, Becky came out and was like, "Hey, we never had our match in the steel cage match because you're a little bitch, you know." Mm. And and it got real heated, and maybe a little shoot, few shoot, shoot words because uh, Bailey didn't call her Becky in the in the little exchange. She called her Rebecca. You yeah. So if you haven't seen that exchange, definitely go on YouTube you. and check out that exchange. Uh, but she's like, hey, I want to ch- I want to fight you steel cage match, you know, next week on Raw. And Bailey's like, no, why would I do that? You know, I, I, I got no reason to do that. And she's like, oh, I had, Bailey, Becky goes, oh, I had a feeling you'd say that. Uh, I'll, hold on. I'll be right back. And she drops her mic. She goes back backstage and ba- they, but they don't cut to backstage. They stay on out in the uh, arena. And ba- uh, Bailey goes, oh, of course, she's going to get more excuses. Always got to come up with excuses. You know why she can't do this? Why she can't do that? Probably an excuse. Why should we should have the match? She came out with an excuse, all right. She came out with Dakota Kai's foot in a chair. Hey, now. 
Dakota Kai's foot was in a chair. <laughs> Dakota Kai writhing in agony. Becky had another chair in her hand. Uh, you can figure out what was oh, going to happen. Oh, that would been that would been brutal. Yeah. So she goes, give the match or else. And and Bailey's freaking out, and she goes, fine. She goes, no, I'm not giving you that. Fine. Ba- Becky raises the chair, and Bailey screams, no, 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 fine, fine, fine. You've got your match. You've got your match. We'll we'll have the match. And she goes, great. And you can your little cronies can be there too if you want. And oh by the way. You should go check on EO in the back. Hmm. And they never showed what happened to EO, but EO did tweet out that night after this occurred, quote, oh, shit. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, it's a great way to continue that feud going on. Uh-huh. I don't think it's going to go to Mania, but... No, probably not. But, you know, in the meantime, though... I'm, Raw, I'm Raw must it. watch TV. Yeah, no, Raw definitely stepped the game up, and you knew it had to coming off the heels of the Royal Rumble. Uh-huh. So, that being said, the road to WrestleMania is on right now. The roads to WrestleMania. Yes, Hit us up on that hashtag, hashtag ODPagePod. What is your thoughts about this year's Royal Rumble? We, we had the poll up on Twitter. Uh, people were giving it a C. And I don't, I don't like, everybody has an opinion, sure. Yeah. I think it was more of AEW bias, in my opinion, <laughs> because the, I, we all thought the show was great. Talking to fellow podcasters, fellow fans, everybody came back very positive. But let us know what you thought of that. And if you want even more pro wrestling content, 607TWS and your favorite podcast provider and, and, and pad. There's a new blogs count anywhere out. Ooh, okay. Yeah, actually, I uh, came out with one talking about the NWA, talking about MLW has a big show. If you're in the Philly area this weekend, Glory Pro Wrestling a lot more so. For anything and everything that is that, odpagepodcast.com. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. This is Tom from Tom Joe Lou. This is Matt from Sideroom Sounds. And you're listening to ODPH Podcast. Wanna go where no one knows my name To the desert, the oceans, or the plains Cause I wanna go Coming back for the final segment on this week's edition of the ODPH Podcast and got to talk a little local minute and we got a little bit of an update here uh, especially surrounding the Binghamton uh, Bombers which was the Professional Box Lacrosse Association uh, team we had here in Binghamton. Uh, they have suspended the remit and then they, by they I mean the entire league has uh, suspended their remaining games in 2023. And reading from an article on WBNG.com, which is one of our local news affiliates here in the 607, it says, quote, Professional lacrosse arrived in Binghamton at the end of 2022 with the Professional Box Lacrosse Association and the Binghamton Bombers. But now the league is shutting down for the rest of 2023, suspending the remainder of its inaugural season. Here is the official statement from Vice President of PBLA, Jillian Kaplan. Quote, The Professional Box Lacrosse Association announced yesterday that all remaining games across the league will be postponed as of January 31st, 2023. Season ticket holders will be contacted and will receive a full refund for the duration of the season. We made a difficult decision to postpone the remainder remainder of the inaugural season, said owner Carmen Kesner. Our Our vision is to implement a fast, physical, safe, and exciting experience for our fans and players. We believe we haven't been able to create this experience, but we feel there are elements we need to improve upon. For that reason, we are halting the season to reorganize the league and to team operations. Uh, Part of that reorganization comes with the appointment of Brad Bryant, the new chief executive officer of the PBLA. Quote, I'm excited about what is in store for this league. My goal is to take Mr. Kesner's concept to the next level and create a sustainable product for years to come that both the players and the fans can be proud of, close quote. Uh, so, unfortunately, if you're a fan of PBLA, you know, I was not able to catch games down here yeah. locally because it was just... I had other stuff going on, but their season has wrapped up for the season. I have been hearing some rumors as to why it was or why it wasn't. A rumor I'd heard was one of the primary financial backers had pulled out, uh, which if that's the case, that's certainly going to hurt you in an, in an inaugural season. Uh, but unfortunately, as of this recording, no more PBLA games coming forward. Yeah, it's sad to hear. I mean, I was hearing a lot of rumors about that as well, too. So, <clears throat> You know, it's tough, but hopefully they can come back and bounce back and, you know, put on a better season next year. Yeah. Uh, and then switching over to the Federal <laughs> Prospects Hockey League, which is the minor professional hockey league uh, that our local Binghamton Black Bears play in. Looking at the division standings, still in second place behind Danbury. Uh, Danbury is in first place with a record of 24 wins, four losses, four losses in overtime or shootout. And then Binghamton's in second place with a record of 22 wins, seven losses, and two losses in overtime or shootout. Looking at their schedule from this past week, they had two 
games, uh, one on Friday, uh, January 27th, which was against the Danbury Hat Tricks, uh, where they won by the final score of 6-2. to two. Uh, And then they had a game on the road Saturday, January 28th, which was against the uh, Delaware Thunder, where they won by the final score of 4-2. to two. So they got a nice little three-game winning streak going on. Looking ahead to their games they have this coming uh, this coming week, uh, they've got a game on Friday, February 3rd at 7 o'clock Eastern against the Delaware Thunder. That is at home at Divisions Veterans Memorial Arena. And then they've got another game on Saturday, February 4th, 7 o'clock Eastern, also at home against the Delaware Thunder. Uh, so for more tickets, information, and all that good stuff, BinghamtonBlackBears.com. All right, and we also got mentioned Binghamton Bulldogs, still number one in the ABA rankings. Hey! Yeah, so, and if you are living locally, the last home game is this Saturday night as they take on the Central Jersey Sharks 7.05 start time, BinghamtonBulldogs.com for more information uh, or the Facebook page, which they are extremely active about. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I've got to mention a little bit of soccer, professional soccer, you know, European soccer. Uh, because this one came across my phone as I was doing some laundry today. I said, hey, this is kind of cool. Uh, and that is uh, from the reading from an article on ESPN.com. Uh, Leicester has signed forward Apaku out of Syracuse. Oh. Yeah, so Leicester City uh, have signed, Damn. reading from the article, Leicester City have signed forward Nathan Apaku, from most recently of Syracuse University, the club announced on Tuesday. Apaku, 21, has been immediately loaned to Belgian side OH11, the sister club of Leicester, due to having a common owner in travel retail company King Power. A native of Accra, Ghana, Apaku moved to the U.S. ahead of the 2021 collegiate season, playing for Lindsey Wilson, an NAIA school based in Columbus, Kentucky, Columbia, Kentucky. He went on to score 19 goals in 19 games before transferring to Syracuse. Prior to the 2022 collegiate season, Apaku played for the Ventura County uh, Fusion in USL League 2, which occupies the fourth tier in the U.S. soccer system. Apaku scored 11 goals in 16 games and, and playoff appearances and led Ventura County to the League 2 title, scoring in the final. Uh, Apaku continued his knack for scoring critical goals with the Orange. He started the season on the wing, but quickly formed a devastating strike partnership with Levante Johnson on his way to 11 goals in eight and eight assists, including a tally in the NCAA final, which the Orange won on penalties over Indiana University. Quote, he's a strong player, an intelligent player, holds the ball up really well, and that was something that impressed, said Syracuse head coach Ian McIntyre about Apaku. He has very good feet, he's powerful, he's quick. But what really impressed us was his ability to be a link player for us and really complimented Levante Johnson's pace in behind. So a very smart player, which I think surprised a few players, but he scored some big goals for us and was uh, and has the ability to create space in the box. He's quite elusive with his movement, close quote. So hey, guy who was playing here in the Northeast um, not too yeah. long ago, going overseas to play in the Premier League. Okay, you can't fault him on that, man. That's an yeah. awesome accomplishment. Yeah, good luck to him. Absolutely. Uh, for me, one shots, it's all-star weekend for the NHL, hey. which is perfect. So I won't have to scream at my TV and watch the Rangers play. <laughs> I do love that fact. But if you're looking for more hockey action this weekend as the teams are taking their break, February 3rd and 4th live from Florida. So they're down playing the home of the Panthers. Uh, they'll be taking uh, the skills test and obviously the game going on as well, too, on Sunday or uh, the 4th, I would say. Okay. So, you know, it's always a good time to, you know, recharge the batteries and recharging means they have a nice lengthy break. I know our beloved Rangers are off now until February 6th, mm-hmm. so that definitely helps matters. Third in the Metropolitan Division, which I will take a record of 27 and 14 and 8. And uh, was it 62 points? Nice. Yep. Nice. I'll, I'll take that at this stage. Carolina is the one throwing me off, though. 32 and 9. Oh. 72 points. Goddamn. In fact, Jersey's out of us. Uh, it's not sitting well, but hey, well, I heard ba- I heard Boston's doing real well. Boston is 38 and 7. God damn. Yeah, they're playing like a team possessed 81 points already. Yeah, get all your wins out of the way now. Don't have any in the playoffs. Yeah, hey, hey let them have it bad. I know Bo- even Buffalo's hanging around there, but yeah. then again, they're like the Mets. They have a good start of the season and they fade off. Hey. I know. I'm, hey. I'm, I'm going to catch a lot of heat for that one. Yeah, you are. But, but, what? Hey, listen, we got to give credit to the Rangers. Though. They call, I saw they called that kid up and then he scored a goal, like, what, the first game? Yeah, no, the R- Rangers finally got it together. So I know they've been making some moves. I know when Truba really got in everybody's face, that definitely helped matters. And they've been a different team since. So I do like seeing that out of them. They're showing a lot more heart. And they're going to need to if they're going to make a run in the playoffs, which, barring any cataclysmic injury, they should make a deep run. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, me as a as an obnoxious Rangers fan, oh, I'm already calling her shot for the for the cup. But yeah. it's going to be tough this year, especially if Carolina can actually score some goals in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Which I mean, let's face it, that was their problem last year. Um, you know, anything is possible. So I will say, if your hockey team is doing all right, it's a good time to be a fan. If you're uh, near the bottom of the league, and you know, we're talking about Columbus and uh, Montreal. Uh, probably not the best time of year, but it is what it is, folks. Mm-hmm. And the All Star Game is always fun. Like you never go in there thinking it's going to be anything serious. Defense optional, exactly. Like I say, until the last like five minutes. Yeah, like for anybody that's expecting anything more, like I always stress it. Like, why would you expect anything crazy in an All Star Game? Like people are hitting each other and like really checking. Mm-hmm. Like, no, you're no. you're not going to have that at all. You just enjoy it for the finesse. It's the fun moment. You see your favorite players team up for the first time, and you know in some cases, and that's all you need to do for it. So, that said, make sure you're you're following the NHL.com for more information on events going on. And if you're in the uh, Florida area, there it's Sunrise, Florida. Go check out this you know the weekend yeah. going on. It'll be a fun time had by all. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, and certainly not least, we do have to mention that in the show note description of this episode, there will be a link to the Tyree Nichols Memorial Fund. Uh, of course, Tyree Nichols is the uh, gentleman who was brutally murdered because, uh, let's face it, that's what it is. That was a murder that took place yeah. down in Memphis uh, on January 7th of 2023. Uh, the officers, five of the officers involved in that have been fired. I know yesterday there was a sixth one placed on, that connected to it that was placed on administrative leave, uh, but the other five officers officers have been fired uh but there is a link in the show notes to the gofundme that will directly support the family uh currently uh as we record there is one million three hundred nine thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars raised which if you're sitting there saying hey well 1.3 million dollars that's enough now like even if you don't have the ability to share it or to, to contribute to it share it every mm-hmm. little bit help because i'll be honest until you mentioned this to me i had no idea this was even a, yeah. up or available for this uh the money goes directly to support the family because the parents they work nine to five jobs you know <laughs> Uh, they don't have unlimited paid time off, and, and they want to build a memorial skate park for, for their son in his honor, for his love of skating and sunsets. You know, So every little bit will go to help the family for this senseless act and this brutal murder. Because, like I said, that's what it was. The video is out there. If you want to go see it, I do not recommend no, it. No, I, I, I refuse to watch it. I, I watched it. I do not recommend watching it. You know, But if, you, if, if you're feeling bold enough, do you. But this every little bit in this donation for this fund will help. I refuse to watch it just because I can't handle the fact that we're in this day and age where this shit happens. Mm-hmm. And it's you're exactly right. It was a murder, and I and I I just I can't pull myself to watch it. Yeah, I I can't I can't even imagine what his family's going through. Yeah, I I can't. It's awful. It, yeah. So obviously our heartfelt condolences go out to his family and friends, and we have the link on odphpodcast.com. It's right on the front page. Yep. So if you have the ability to donate donate like and like i said even if you can't mm. donate because hey money's tight you know oh you you lost one of your jobs i don't hey totally yeah. understand you don't have to contribute money to to help with this fund sharing works wonders because like i said until ken mentioned that there was a gofundme i had no idea this existed yeah. you know so sharing helps get the word out and helps let people know who might have that ability to donate find out about it yeah no and, and i definitely give a shout out to our guy jt from beyond the fandom he lives in memphis and obviously, this hit him very close. To, you know, obviously, that's that's his hometown. Right, yeah. You know, so, I, like I say, he sent up the link, so we definitely want to make sure we're doing our part to get this out there. And, you know. It's just horrible. Yeah, it's just it's absolutely sickening that we still live in this day and age where this shit happens. And it needs to stop. And, yeah. The thoughts and, thoughts and prayers with the family. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the only thing we can really say at this point. But it's just like it's it's so it's 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 awful. Yeah, like I'm I'm sorry, folks. I'm trying to find nice words to say that are professional. Of just about like the fact that this is another yeah. incident of yeah. just fucking bullshit. The kid, kid was on his way home. You know, wasn't armed, wasn't yeah. smuggling anything. Was just on his way home. Yeah. You know, and and got approached by these five these five officers and was. You know, I, I saw the description of, you know, from the the lawyer for the family where he said after they so they were shown the video and, and the lawyer said he was beaten like a pinata. 
you know, and I was like, really? I was like, that seems like, that seems a little extreme, you know, is that really the case? And then I saw the video, I'm like, oh no, that's absolutely the case. Yeah, like I said, I can't, I can't pull myself to watch it. I, like I said. I, I don't recommend it for anybody. Yeah. Like, if you're of strong enough, you know, stuff that you can, hey, do it on your own time. Yeah, I know. I'm, like, I'm not recommending it. No, like I said, I refuse to because I can't, I can't sit there and watch somebody get murdered like that. Like, I'm sorry. They just, no. But we're just trying to, I guess just to close this up because I'm, got to get more emotional about this. If you can donate, donate at the very least share the link. We have it right on the home page. So, you know, our thoughts and prayers go out to him and his family. Yeah. And we will just say, uh, in closing, you know, thank you as always for listening to the ODPH podcast. And then thank you for tolerating my Scotty Farrell voice. I will hope it will get better by next week. Fingers crossed. But thank you to Padawan J for, Doing what he does, taking over the lead role. Hey, you're welcome. And making it make me sound somewhat decent. So I'm not going always shake, shake, shake it up. Like like a true Sky Pharrell or Wolfman Jack voice. I can't really tell which one I've been told I've been to have both. So I don't know, Pat. You tell me. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah. But either way, we thank you for listening and supporting the show. It truly means the absolute world to us. And thank you again. And we will see you next time. Punch. I'm gonna beat him to the punch Cause I can't bring